All right, so I think we can start and we give ourselves a couple of minutes. So next we have uh, uh, Srinand, and, and he'll be talking to us about multiplayer machine learning with Metaflow, OpenAI, Whisper, and Kubernetes. Thank you, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shri Zavadekar. I am an engineer at Outabounds. Outabounds is one of the main companies behind the open source Metaflow project. Today, we are going to talk about multiplayer machine learning, essentially, with uh, Metaflow, OpenAI, and Kubernetes. I know, lots of jargon, lots of terms. We'll try and justify the existence of each of them. <clears throat> so well, let's start with Metaflow. So what is Metaflow? So Metaflow is an open source project. Um, Metaflow makes it easy to access resources needed for any data science and data intensive application. So typically you would require compute, workflows, data, and versioning. So for doing any of these, if you want to use a Python-based API, Metaflow is one of the projects you can use. Metaflow began as an open source project at Netflix. It's still actually uh, open sourced under the Netflix group of projects. You can go to github.com slash Netflix slash Metaflow to learn more about Metaflow. So Metaflow makes it very simple to create Python-based data science projects. Python is one of the most commonly used languages for data science. Here I have a quick example of what a Metaflow flow looks like. So on the left-hand side, if you see kind of sort of the, the terminal-based black and white screen, um, is a simple example of what a flow looks like. You have a three-step flow where someone creates a hello flow or any class which actually uh, implements this flow spec that Metaflow has. And there are three steps. The start step, as you can tell, is the first step that begins the flow. This one says the next step is the work step. So the work step gets called next. And then work says the next one to do is end, and then end actually completes the flow. You can do sequential or parallel execution of these steps. You can have data passed from one step to another, or you can have data passed from one step to multiple steps that run in parallel. Again, take a look at the open source documentation for more information about this. But the best part about Metaflow actually is that you can run these steps locally as well as remotely. So as you go through the process of actually writing the code and actually building the flows or building your data science code, you can keep running this thing locally using something like hello.py run. So you keep running this locally. Once you think you're ready to actually run this at scale on a bigger backend like Kubernetes where you have access to more memory, more CPU, or maybe more uh, or GPU resources, or maybe access to data that is only available in Kubernetes, you can actually just run this with something called like hello hello.py run with Kubernetes. And then if you want to actually deploy them and have these run at a particular cadence or run it based on events, you can use Argo workflows for doing this, and you know those are the two commands. Again, all of this is available in the documentation. Okay, so then let's move to the next part of the, of the, the multiple jargons that we had, OpenAI Whisper. OpenAI Whisper is actually a machine learning model created by OpenAI that does speech-to-text translation. So the simple thing that it does is, given an audio file, give me the text output of that audio. So that's what it does. It supports multiple languages. And another interesting facet of OpenAI Whisper is that this model, or the model weights rather, are available in multiple sizes. They have t-shirt sizing. So you basically pick, as a user, you have to pick whether you use the tiny model, or the small model, or the large model, or the medium model. And that size of the model decides a few other things. So the size of the model actually decides how much resources you will need when you actually use the model for transcription. So if you use the tiny model, obviously you'll need fewer CPU, fewer memory. If you use the large model, you'll, you'll need the maximum amount of CPU and maximum amount of memory just so that the model actually fits into memory. This actually decides, so the size of the model decides the resources, it decides the accuracy of the generated transcript. So, you know, how accurate is the transcript? And then, of course, it also decides the time required for actual transcription. So again, given a file, like how long does it take to actually transcribe it, size of the model has an input uh, on that. So, so we came up with this fun challenge that, okay, Metaflow says that you can do all these kind of sort of cool DAG-related uh, interesting stuff using um, just Python APIs, and Whisper is a model that can do transcription with multiple sizes. Can we do something like this? If you see this flow from left to right, we have a start step, and there what we want to do is we want to transcribe three URLs, so basically three files that are available as URLs. And in each of these cases, we want to use the tiny model and the large model. So we have two, the tiny OpenAI Whisper model and the large model, transcribe the same file with both of these, and then do a join just so that you know you 
kind of sort of get the results. In theory, at this join step, you could do some sort of post-processing to see whether the output of the tiny was better or the large model was better or the time difference between the two or what have you. So you could do some sort of post-processing. I have a demo in which this post-processing does not happen, but it is something that could be done. And then you complete the step, the, the whole flow. So let's see how we can actually go about doing this. So I have the source code for all of this here, um, where we have the start step. We, we decide or we actually set up three URLs in this case. Of course, the number of URLs in this case is three, but it could be any number. Then you call this transcribe. Transcribe says that when I'm at transcribe, call two steps called tiny and small. So I know I mentioned large model in the previous step, but instead of large, I'm using a small model. It's just it's easier to do it. Um, so you have two steps that are happening in parallel for each URL. For each URL, you call this tiny and uh, small steps, and then they both at the end say join, so they combine the results, and then join finally calls the end step, uh, which actually completes. So then let's take a look. Oh, by the way, what other, what would be the best way to run this? Obviously, it will be on Kubernetes, right? I mean, that's what brings all of us here. The interesting bit here is that you can use Kubernetes decorators uh, in Metaflow, and you can pick and choose how much resources you can provide to each of these steps. So for the tiny step, I'm actually giving it two CPUs and one gig of memory because that's what the OpenAI documentation talks about. And then for the small step, I'm actually giving it four CPUs and eight gigs of memory, just because that's the amount of memory needed to actually run this step. So, and this will automatically get taken care of. When this runs on Kubernetes, the corresponding pods that get spawned up, Metaflow will make sure that these spawn up with these resources. So once this actually happens, you, all you have to do is basically run this uh, with Kubernetes in this case. Um, and, and this will actually spawn each of those steps one after the other or some in sequence, some in parallel, depending on how the flow was actually written. And then each of those steps will take its time. We won't have time for actually waiting for this to complete, even though it just takes about a couple of minutes to complete. I had a previous run that was actually uh, here that you can see. So this multi-audio transcription flow, is this is the one that is actually running right now for the last what, 15, 16 seconds. And this one was the run that I ran just before uh, for some time. But you can see in this case, this is the Metaflow UI. This also is an open, part of the open source Metaflow project. You can see that the tiny step here completes, like um, had its output where this is the actual transcription of the, of the, of the first audio file that it received. And then this is the small model. This is also like, it'll also have its own output. And it's kind of sort of the same output. If you look at the overall DAG for this, um, you can see that uh, you can see that, that the steps started in parallel and how much time they took and so on and so forth. The DAG here actually shows that we had the start step, then transcribe, then multiple of these where you had the tiny and small steps running in parallel, the join and then the post join. So this actually, Kubernetes is a great mechanism for actually running this, and Metaflow makes it super easy to be able to use these kinds of models and these kinds of um, resources for the use cases like model inference in this case. So that's awesome. Uh, what can we do with this? Like this was like a cool demo, but what can we do with this, and how can we extend it further? Well, the, we had a fixed set of three URLs or three files in this case. Imagine that this, pop, this list of audios that you want to actually transcribe is actually getting populated based on some other input that you go out and look at a YouTube channel or find like search or for audio files somewhere and actually, or look at your Zoom call history and find all the Zoom recordings that you have. So you can scale out the number of URLs that, act, that you're actually transcribing at any point in time. You could use GPUs. So in this case, we, we saw that we could use GPUs, uh, sorry, CPUs, but you can easily use GPUs for this. The amount of time it takes for transcribing audio to text using GPUs is orders of magnitude less than what it takes for CPUs. You can schedule these flows periodically, so you can have these, let's say, run every night, and you have some uh, YouTube video that, that gets updated every day, so you can actually transcribe videos every day or every night, and then run these flows based on events. That actually is the, is the really cool part. So I really want to do this where there is a Zoom call, uh, we, it gets recorded, or a Google Meet call, it gets recorded. The moment the recording actually completes, it actually triggers a flow that actually takes the video, transcribes it, uses another, the other like summarization machine learning models, 
passes the entire transcription to the summary, summarization model, generates a summary, and sends it as a Slack message to the team saying, this was the summary of the call that you just completed. That would be a fun thing to do, and it'll be much, much more fun if you do it in Metaflow. Uh, <laughs> um, so thanks a lot. That's all I had in mind. Uh, Metaflow is also available. Uh, there is a Slack channel open to everyone, so feel free to join us on the Slack channel if you have more questions about Metaflow. And the company that uh, I mentioned that we are behind Metaflow is called Outer Bounds. We have a booth called uh, Booth 020. So come join us and talk to us at the booth. We also have an event uh, day after tomorrow in the evening. So if you want to join us for the event, uh, feel free to come talk to us at the booth, or you can scan the QR code and uh, join us there. Thank you. <laughs>